Hello, my name is Salman Hamid and I'm Assistant Professor of Integrated Science and Humanities at Hampshire College. I'm Kevin Anderson. I teach courses in film and anthropology at the University of Massachusetts and this is Film Autopsy. Hello, this is Salman Hamid and we are at Film Autopsy. Yes, I'm Kevin Anderson and uh, we're going to do an autopsy of Terrence Malick's film, The Tree of Life. Um, pretty ambitious title, wouldn't you say? Not just the title, the movie is amazingly <laughs> ambitious. This is, this covers <laughs> the, from the beginning of the universe to the end and everything in between. Well, they skip a little bit, you know, it's, the film's not nine hours long. It, although for some people that I've spoken to, they said it felt like it. Um, I think we should say right away, both of us were huge fans of it and we actually, went back to see it again um, together. And um, I think it is a very ambitious title and a very ambitious film. And I think Malick really delivers with this film. Um, it's uh, engaging in terms of its story, um, even the, the kind of micro story within it of this uh, family in, uh, in Texas in the 1950s and these three young boys growing up. Um, and it does have this rather cosmic sweep to it. It does go all the way back to, as you said, you know, uh, dinosaurs on the Earth and then an asteroid hitting the Earth and wiping out the dinosaurs and um, it goes, goes somewhat into the future. There's a, there's a sequence there that I think is kind of reminiscent of, a, of like a, a heaven uh, or some kind of, you know, revelation <coughs> kind of sequence. Um, so it's, it's very bold and in many ways I think it's, it's a close to three hour art house film and I think that's why so the <coughs> film has gotten some pretty negative reviews as well as some good ones and the people that I've spoken to who just did not like it at all I think it's a matter of expectation you go in thinking oh Brad Pitt Sean Penn um, this is gonna be an interesting film I know it's gonna be kind of you know heady and deep but okay I'm on for, I'm along for the ride and it's 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 more than that it's <coughs> very artistic he does not have a uh, kind of your standard kind of narrative structure at all um, and I think that uh, is going against the expectations of a number of uh, people who've went, gone to see the film. I would just say when it showed at Cannes, um, it received a massive round of, of booing and hisses and then went on to win at Cannes. So uh, I think that says a lot about the, uh, the divisiveness of the film. Right. The movie is, uh, I mean, I think it would be fair to say the movie is not for everyone. And this is a particular type of movie, uh, but we have uh, recently seen uh, another science fiction from Another Earth or Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and there are other films which, Paul. Uh, pro which <laughs> pretend, well not Paul, but I mean Another Earth for example, it is pretending to be about more than what, like you know, that it is tackling large life, larger than life issues. Right, right. Whereas uh, in this particular film, The Tree of Life, I think one thing that you cannot say is that it is not ambitious, that he is indeed, Terrence Malick is indeed tackling real big issues. And whether this is your particular cup of tea or not, I think that is for you to decide. But I think, be forewarned, this is not a standard narrative film. And in fact, no. it's just very hard to even provide a synopsis of what is this film about. Well, we can talk a little bit about what we liked about it. Yeah, well, and, but, but I, I also wanted to a little bit set it up because to a certain degree, the film. Okay it has religious connotations. And you mentioned actually religion coming in sort of like in the heaven aspect. Right. And it is predominantly about, it starts with nature mm -hmm. or grace. And it has quotations from the book of Job. Mm -hmm. and, and to a certain degree, it takes that and presents a very, like, not, I, I, I was gonna say a literal view, visualization of uh, certain aspects from the book of Job, but, but rather it is, Terence Malick's interpretation mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, I think the film works in terms of its religiosity and its spirituality. It works within a Judeo-Christian uh, frame, but I don't think the film is necessarily being, it, it's not necessarily a Christian film. It's about something large or it entertains the idea that there may be things much larger than you know what we know in a concrete way in terms of this earth and um, not necessarily that there's some intelligent design or no. anything like that but that there is a way of grace that moves through everything um, but there's also the way of nature as uh, as the film sets up and it doesn't seem to really try to answer well you know 
is it one or is it the other? I, I think Malik very artfully demonstrates that both of these forces move through the universe. And uh, the, one of the main characters in the film, uh, one of the young boys, um, uh, very similar to his mother, I de definitely is, is moving along this trajectory of grace, of empathy, of gentleness, of contemplation. And Brad Pitt's character and Sean Penn's characters are definitely more the way of, of nature. Right. I mean, it's um, the movie, uh, along with nature and grace, I mean, the questions that it is tackling is the notion of pain and suffering. Mm. How do we deal with a loss? When you see, w w when you are hit with a loss, how do you make sense of it? And I think that's where, again, the connection mm. with the larger thematic with the book of Job that comes in. And Terence Malick is trying to address those questions, doesn't necessarily answering those. I mean, I, I think it's very clear that the, the movie doesn't say, well, this is the way, this is the right way, this is the wrong way, but it is, uh, in a true sense, uh, somebody grappling uh, mm -hmm. with those issues. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, one of the things that um, I wanna talk about, again, it's very hard to talk linearly about this film, but there is a particular moment when, I think, when we went uh, on the opening night when it mm -hmm. uh, started, uh, it was a packed house at our local cinema, Amherst Cinema here. And after about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, half an hour into the film, people walked out. A bunch of people, people started just walk, started walking out. And, and let me set it up actually what happened and why, because I think that is an important, and I think if you are planning on seeing the film, it may help to know what's coming because it does come just like it's in your face. Right, And right. And the issue is, uh, again, uh, there are a lot of whispers uh, in the film and that I think is also a hallmark of Terrence Malick mm -hmm. that you don't know who's talking really but there is a whispering voice and at one point... It's kind of internal monologues that... Exactly. That you, th you it may be one of the main characters or... Or, or may, perhaps it's the Sean yeah. Penn's character, I right. think, uh, who has grown up as Sean Penn, but like a you know, younger character. And uh, the question it asks is, uh, is, is somehow it is about w the God asks actually in the Book of Job, like you know that where were you when we created the universe? And it is, I think it was, I don't exactly remember, but I think it is reversed, like where was I when you created the universe? And then the movie from this uh, focused on this very minute mm. summer and this, uh, or, or uh, basically a year in Texas in the 1950s, it moves out and goes into the Big Bang. It goes, when, you, when it set it up, that where were you or where was I when the universe was being created? Suddenly you go back to the Big Bang and you start these spectacular images, first of all, mm -hmm. of the universe and then the early images of galaxies that we've seen from the Hubble Space Telescope and then you keep on going and then you form the Earth. Mm -hmm. Spectacular animated yeah. images that I think, uh, it, it, and, and, and in the credits you can see actually they used real astro astronomical data, astronomical images. Mm -hmm. And then it goes about the evolution of the earth. You actually see the life starting and it's all nature. Mm -hmm. It's all natural. And it goes through sort of like puddles and ponds and the life is getting complex. So you have evolution taking place. And so if you don't like, like don't, don't accept evolution, that may be a bit of a problem, but evolution is a fact of science. So anyway, so it gets complicated. <laughs> and then you get to dinosaurs. And I think that is a key moment. It's a very bizarre scene. Yes. And it yes. would really raise the question, wait a minute, dinosaurs? And these dinosaurs are a little odd. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the dinosaurs <laughs> in the film? I like the dinosaurs in the film. And there's a very, uh, I think, uh, significant moment where it takes place along a riverbed. And um, one dinosaur is either exhausted or it's um, uh, injured and it's panting on the riverbank. And another one, which looks quite a bit bigger, so probably it's Predator, comes over and does not devour the, the, the other dinosaur. It puts his it foot puts on his, his foot face. Out, like, I, like yeah. showing, like, I have power over you. And I think that's key to the film because this notion of nature and grace, Malik, in terms of watching the Texas family, you can easily see, okay, this is something that, these are choices people can make. But what he does with the dinosaur sequences, and I think just in the whole formation of the universe, that, no, these are fundamental elements to life everywhere. And nature and grace flow through all, 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 all things. And I think that's really important because it's, then it makes his cos, you know, cosmological and kind of primordial earth stuff not stand outside of the story of the family. That it's, it's all, it, it's a continuum. Exactly, and in fact, it's a litmus test. If you, so either you would really like the dinosaur scene and you would dig the film, or this is the place where you're gonna say, I'm out of here. Like, no, this is too crazy. 
But I should mention that right after the dinosaur scene, what you see is just a rock, an asteroid yes, tumbling in. out of nowhere. And it's coming from space, and it wipes out all the dinosaurs, okay? So which is very interesting, because that also takes this notion of, this is nature. Nature. It comes in, it kills you. I mean, so the, the notion of how do you deal with loss in that context, yes. it is not resolved. You have, uh, you have, to a certain degree, grace with the dinosaur right. doing that. Right. But then there is a rock that comes in and this kills all the dinosaurs, irrespective of whether there was grace or not. And I think this is the theme. And similarly in the film, there's a moment where a young boy um, drowns in the river, just out of nowhere. And it's not explained. We don't really even know who this boy is. And so the people around him are trying to understand, well, why did he die? Why did God let him die? And I think that's a, a very interesting thing for someone like Malik, who is, who is a very spiritual filmmaker, to send that up. And so something you said earlier, and we, and we should probably bring this to a close, is it? I think people who don't believe in evolution should see this film because I think there's a there's a very beautiful uh, kind of uh, opening that uh, Malik makes for um, spirituality and the way of nature and evolution to uh, uh, to coexist. Yeah, I think this is. I mean, I think spirituality is the right word. And and normally when I hear spirituality, you go like, oh, it's going to be gooey or whatever. Like, you know. But I think I think this is a movie. <laughs> gooey spirituality. Something like that. But but I think this is a movie, which uh, it has religious overtones, but actually it's not heavy-handed no. at all. And it's it's a wonderful struggle. Yeah. And you can see that struggle. You may not agree with everything that is in right. the movie. It is a beautiful film. But it's shot you would so well. But you would appreciate what Terrence Malick is trying yeah. to do. And every scene, every shot is a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And I think... It's gorgeous. I mean, every, every frame is like a painting. The, the music cues are fantastic. So I would, I would go, I would recommend it, and I would really encourage, and I think you would uh, concur with this, if you can see it in the theater, that is really the place to watch a film like The Tree of Life because it, it's going to play differently at home. On a, I don't care how big your home theater is. Um, and and it's, it's a, in it's, the theater. And it's a hard film. So go with the expectation that it's not going to be, oh, well, you know, hey, we don't have to do anything. Let's go for entertainment. This is not entertainment. Yeah. This is art. It is. And so if yeah. you think sort of like, you know, reading Dostoevsky or something like that, it's going to be a hard film. Think about Solaris. I mean, I think, well, take it that, but do, that go see it. Because, because it is, uh, it is worth seeing. Uh, thank you.